Chapter 19 of Toyotaro's Dragon Ball Super Manga is out for the month of December, and we're just a couple months away from the new arc, and it does appear like Toyotaro is going to be rushing through a lot of the stuff in the future Trunks arc. It's not going to be anywhere close to being as long as it was in the anime. In fact, it looks like my prediction of Toyotaro combining all of the fights from the arc into one may actually come to fruition so that he can wrap it up. And the vast majority of this particular chapter is Vegeta versus Goku Black, but there are some very interesting changes here we have to go over to stop any kind of confusion in the community. Vegeta, of course, ever the aggressor, starts off the fight swinging as best he can against Goku Black, and at one point Goku Black does pretty well, but then decides to get serious and transforms, but no... The big revelation is that he does not transform into Super Saiyan Rose slash Rose. No, no, no. He actually transforms into the traditional golden-haired Super Saiyan form. And it's interesting because Vegeta himself even says, hmm, his hair is golden. Now, a lot of people were confused about this because a lot of folks presumed that Goku Black's version of Super Saiyan was the pink-haired, you know, golden-haired version. And there was some debate because I stated that Super Saiyan Rose is like Goku Black's version of Super Saiyan Blue. And a lot of people were saying, no, 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 no. It's just his version of Super Saiyan with a 50 times multiplier. And that is indeed not the case. Rose is his version of Super Saiyan Blue, a.k.a. Super Saiyan with God Key. If you look at Toriyama's original concept art for Goku Black, he actually states in the concept art translated by Herms that Goku Black becomes a Super Saiyan like Goku and a Super Saiyan of a slightly different color than Goku. So Toriyama himself in the original concept art stated that Goku Black has two transformations. Now what's interesting about this is that the anime chose to go with Rose as his only form, whereas Toyotaro is taking the notes and actually having Black use both forms. Very interesting choice by Toyotaro, and it's again another deviation from the anime, but it does somewhat prove that Rose is actually like a corrupted version of SS Blue. It's actually like Goku Black's version with God Key, and it is stronger than the golden hair form. Now, one of the really cool shots that I thought Toyotaro did this month on the manga is he actually paid tribute to the scene where Goku did the Kaioken against Nappa with Vegeta. You can actually see right here on your screen that he does the same motions with the two fists sticking out that Goku did when he fought Nappa, except he punched Goku Black in the stomach and not the back. But it's the same thing. I thought that was a really really cool tribute from Toyotaro who is definitely a fan of Dragon Ball without question and now growing up as a fan he works on the product so like I always say guys follow your dreams I also really like how he drew this big right hand writing Goku Black's grill piece I thought that was really awesome and look at the vein on Vegeta's forehead Toyotaro is such a great and fun artist when he draws Dragon Ball like he really in my opinion is Toriyama's successor. I think in years, if Toriyama does fully retire, like completely, I wouldn't mind it if this guy at least did the art stuff because he's so, so damn good. I mean, he kind of is now. Really. One thing I should also mention is that Goku does inform Black that he knows the whole story about how Zamasu puts bodies and all that. So they are aware of it here, but they didn't really give the full explanation like the end. Now, there's a very, very interesting line here, which actually goes back to what I was saying earlier about the SS Rose form. And basically, Vegeta asks Black, he says, because you took Kakarot's body from the future, you should be able to go blue too, right? And Vegeta actually wants Black to go blue. He wants him to go ahead and unleash all his power. But Black says, I can't yet. And then Vegeta explains to him that, well, the reason that you can't is because that body was created from a long history of battle, right down to every nook and cranny and every cell. But for you, it's secondhand goods, which I thought was a great, 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 great line. I love that line. So it's very interesting that in this version, Goku Black still has not been able to tap into God Key and go blue slash rose. He can do it, but he hasn't learned how. Will we see it next month? This is a very interesting path that Toyotaro is taking with the storytelling in that he's building up Goku Black to be able to use that form later on, but he's also combining all the stories together and crunching it up, and the manga does seem quite a bit rushed, but yet Toyotaro is choosing not to show the Rose transformation, which I thought was, again, a very interesting decision by him. You would think that he would just rush through it. Now, the other big storyline from Chapter 19 is Beerus and Whis and Universe 7 Kai going to go visit Gowasu and Shamasu, and pretty much it's similar to what happened in the anime to where 
they investigate the story, except this time Goku's obviously not with them. It's just Beerus and Whis alone. And we do find out from Zamasu that he watched the tournament on GodTube and it piqued his interest. So the time loop, time paradox is not here. It's just totally different. And it's been pretty much confirmed now for sure that that's the case. Beerus even asked him, why did you even ask Zuno about the Dragon Balls and Goku? And that's what he responded with. And in this version, Beerus says you also asked him about God's immortal switching body. So that whole mystery aspect from the anime is not here. Which I understand because even though it was a lot of fun for all of us to sit there and week after week speculate and figure out what's going on, because the manga is behind the anime, there's really no reason to keep it a secret. So Taylor Carl just wants to get through with it. Which again, this once again cements the fact that Dragon Ball Super has no can. If you're new to my channel, you have to understand that the way Dragon Ball Super works is Toriyama writes a, a outline, a, a manuscript, and then Toei and Toyotaro take it and adapt it in their own way. So there is no definitive Dragon Ball Super canon, and there never will be. So the Supreme Kai pretty much tells Zamasu straight up, he's like, I've seen your future, and you're going to commit a lot of evil deeds. And Zamasu's like, oh, you mean righteous? And then he talks about how mortals are a mistake and how they fight, you know, in war after war after war, and that the world does not need mortals, and that their very existence is evil, which I, I love that speech in the manga. I love it. Now, when we cut back to the future, Goku Black Black once again confirms that he's defeated all the gods of destruction, but Goku says, wait a minute, you didn't beat them by yourself, you just killed all the Kai so that they both vanish. That's dirty. And Goku Black says, doesn't matter the means, what matters is I'm the only god left, which I thought was, again, another great, great line, and once again cements the fact that in the future, Goku Black did kill all the Kais, and thus killing all the gods of destruction, and thus rendering the angels, we Spados, and the other ones, completely useless. So we cut back to Universe 10, and Zamasu pretty much states that in the future, if my plan is being carried out, then I can't die. Of course, Beerus is like, now we see your true colors, buddy. And he blocks Zamasu's attempt at an assassination. And Zamasu's freaking out. And then, of course, he does what everybody is now calling, well, not everybody, but a lot of people are calling their favorite move from Lord Beerus, Hakai, which he did do. And he wiped Zamasu out. And uh, we saw it in the anime too, but here it is in the manga as well. And of course, Beerus thinks that because he wiped out Zamasu that the future is going to be okay. But if you watch the anime, you know that's not the case. There is a great line where Beerus warns Gowasu. He says, if you pick another crazy disciple, I'll destroy you. But no, I can't because you're tied to the God of Destruction, so I'll just beat you up instead, which I thought was another classic Beerus line. Good work. So then Vegeta wants to go ahead and finish off Black, and he goes for a final flash, and then all of a sudden, Goku Black is saved just in the nick of time by a very mysterious person. And then the mysterious person says, so this will take you one step closer to your ultimate form, right? And yes, folks, the mystery person is indeed future Zamasu. And thus, the big cliffhanger for Manga Chapter 19 is that Zamasu is there and he states that the Zero Mortals plan requires both of us. Goku is surprised and we end the chapter with future Zamasu and Goku Black side by side. So, Next month, I'm going to predict that Toyotaro is going to cram a hell of a lot of stuff in there. We're going to have Goku fight. We're going to have Goku Black achieve SS Rose. And I do believe in my prediction that we are going to see the merge Zamasu actually happen in the next issue. Will we see Vegito though? Some people are thinking we're not going to see that. I think we will. I think Toyotaro is going to cram as much as he can into that next chapter. And then we're going to begin the next arc you know, sometime in February when that issue of Beat Jump comes out. So, that's it. Let me know what you thought about Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter 19. I felt that even though the art is great, it just feels way too rushed. And I know that Toyotaro is fixing a lot of the problems. The manga still feels ridiculously rushed. And I kind of feel bad for Toyotaro to be put in a situation where he can't really flesh a story out. Because they have to you know, be careful of him getting too far behind on the anime. It is kind of a bummer, but that's just the position they're in right now. So as a result, I still like the anime version of this arc a little bit more. The fact that it's coming off Rush kind of hurts it too, because we're missing so many key scenes. Like the scene where Zamasu has Goku pinned against the wall, and he tells him about how he killed his wife and kid. I mean, we may see that next chapter, but I still feel like it just comes off very, very rushed. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you guys later on. 
Greetings, everyone. So, here, subscribe to this perfect channel and follow Geekdom on these social media platforms. That will be all. One of the topics of discussion that I've seen come up for many, many years in the Dragon Ball fandom in several different languages and cultures has been the question of whether or not Goku is a bad father. It's been going on forever, but one question that I don't think gets brought up enough, which I think now should be brought up after the event of Dragon Ball Super, is, is Goku a bad husband? That to me is the more intriguing question out of the two and one that's been discussed a little bit less than others and on this video, we're talking about it. Hey guys, this is Goku. Donate some of your energy and dragon punch that subscribe button and follow Geekdom 101 on the social media platforms. So is Goku a bad husband? That's been the question that's been coming up lately. It recently in Dragon Ball Super, we found out that Goku never kissed his wife, which was very, very strange. We also have also seen Super and seen Goku just run off and leave and leave his wife behind. And I suppose the best way to answer this question is by asking another question, and that is what makes a good husband? But of course, everybody's answer to that question is going to be a little bit different. But joining me to discuss this, because I don't have a husband, and actually neither does she, but she's probably going to have one sooner than I will. Please welcome, <laughs> please welcome, formerly Canadian gamer girl. She's back on the channel. She has rebranded herself. She's changed her names more times than Bonnie and Clyde. Please welcome, or is it Bonnie? I don't know. Please welcome Amber from Amber's Playhouse. Hey guys, thanks for having me, Danny. It's been a while though. You have not been here in like what eight months? Yeah, I think the last thing we did was a QA. Eight months without you is far too long. <laughs> Way too long. But I have you here to discuss this question. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, I definitely want to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. And no, it doesn't matter what your gender is, if you're male or female, I still want to hear uh, what you think. And I know a lot of you guys out there are probably not married. In fact, I would say the vast majority of you probably are because some of you guys some of you guys shouldn't even be married to be honest, but <laughs> No, Amber, I'm using you here, and it's right, I said I'm using you. Um, I, <laughs> I, I want to, I know, I want to know, okay, if you were married to Goku, here's, I, and this is only one person's opinion, Amber's, everybody else's might be different. Yeah. Would you consider him a bad husband? And before you answer, I just want to say that really the big question here is, you know, Goku is a hero. Goku is, you know, he definitely loves his loved ones, but he can be selfish sometimes. Goku being a bad father is up for debate. There are times when he can be a horrible father and times when he's not. He's almost never around for selfish reasons. He wants to train. He never kisses his wife. Is Goku a bad husband? Okay, I go back and forth on this. I am so on the fence. Do you guys know I love Goku? Not as much as Vegeta, but I love Goku. But honestly, yeah, I, th I, I think Goku is a horrible husband. I'm sorry I said it, but coming from a woman's perspective, or I should say from my perspective, because like you said, everyone's opinion is different, but in my opinion, Goku's a freaking deadbeat husband. Is, that, is there such thing as a deadbeat husband? I guess so. There's a deadbeat father, but I guess, I guess it's considered. I just, there's so many factors. I, I love you, Goku man, but you're a fucking idiot. Okay. <laughs> I mean, but the thing is, there are some benefits to Goku being, you know, one of the strongest fighters ever. He will be there to protect them, but it's also one of those things where, okay, the guy's just... And it's hard to talk about this because we're talking about fictional characters in a fantasy world filled yeah. with dinosaurs and time machines. We don't have that, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, right? But we have to do our best. I mean, the only way to have this discussion is to actually compare Goku to a real-life person. He's never really home that much. But the thing is, in Goku's defense, though, and this is something that we should bring up, we don't see, because of Toriyama's writing, we don't actually see Goku and Chi-Chi in their downtime. There's a little bit of slice of life stuff here and there in Dragon Ball, but we really don't see them having intimate times. And for all we know, Goku might, you know, Chi-Chi might stick with Goku because of those intimate times. Um, we don't know. I mean, that's the thing. There is a big mystery there. We don't know if they do like stuff together, if they hang out, but what we do know is that he far too often just leaves his family. He doesn't even have a job. He had to use money he got from Mr. Satan to help, you know, give it to his wife and things like that. So, let me ask you then, okay? 
What do you think qualifies as a good husband? And what do you think Goku, what are some of Goku's good qualities as a husband versus what you think that he should do as, as a, like, what would you do if we're counseling Goku on how to be a better husband? What would you say to this guy? Well, first off, get a job, you lazy fuck. <laughs> <laughs> No, um, I, honestly, I think having a career is one of the most important things in a relationship because, look, say you're married and you're the only one working. That's fine. If you're a stay-at-home mom or a stay-at-home dad, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But it can start to be a little frustrating down the road, depending on how long you're married for, you know. If it's the first couple of years, you might get away with it. But I feel like after, you know, 5, 10, whatever, 15 years, 20, if you even get to that, if you're the only one bringing in the income to the household, it starts to get very stressful. And I feel like that's where you start to get the real tension in the marriage, right? Because one person's feeling like well i'm going out working nine to five or nine to seven whatever and you're just being at home doing fuck all and you know every all the pressures on me i have to pay the bills i have to buy the groceries i basically have to take care of the whole household and you're doing nothing that's certainly a big problem in a lot of marriages yeah, yeah. It happens frequently. the thing is what i find most mind-boggling is the fact that goku's best friend or his oldest friend is the family of the richest people on earth. I don't understand why Goku and Jesus would have money problems if they're so close to Bulma. I mean, Bulma, I mean, okay, look, this kind of irritates me. Bulma and the Briefs family is pretty much the richest family in the world. And the mm -hmm. second richest, you could argue, is Mr. Satan. And Goku's oldest son is married to Mr. Satan's daughter. Why the fuck are Goku's family having money problems? I don't really understand this, Angela. I don't get it. You should well, not have money problems. That's my thing, too, right? Like, if they're running into struggles, why didn't Goku say, Oh, hey, Bulma, you know, we're running into hard times. We can't buy groceries or, you know, the house is ruined. We can't fix the, we can't fix the chimney or whatever and say, you know, could you spot me a few dollars or whatever? Or same with Gohan, right? Like, why can't she go to Gohan and be like, Can you please help and take care of your mother because your father's not fucking doing anything? <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, why do they even have to worry about work, though? That's the thing. It's like, well, yeah. I respect Goku for going out fishing and getting all the food and things like that. I respect that about him because, yeah. you know, you should do that. And I respect Chi-Chi for what she does around the house. I mean, she is... Obviously, times have changed, but the Dragon Ball story is kind of old school in that you've got, like, the woman in the house and the man going out. Yeah. Obviously, nowadays, things are different, but back then, or at least when the story's being written in that world, that's what it is. Mm. Why do you think... And you might do a video about this, but I want to just get your initial thoughts. Why do you think Chi Chi sticks with this guy? Is it because, you know, she has no reason to leave him? Because she really has no reason to leave him. He's never really been unfaithful to her. He's always been loyal to her. He leaves once in a while, but he certainly did raise their kid. You know, they did raise a pretty good kid. I mean, Gohan's a strong guy, and he's really smart. Um, there are good points, I think, to Goku as a husband. I really do. I think the main factor is she doesn't want to be alone. To me, at this point in her life, she's, what, supposed to be 50 or 60? I can't remember her exact age. To me, it's like she kind of contemplates, well, if I leave him, I'm kind of old now, so the chances of me finding a second husband are probably, like, slim to nothing. So I might as well just stick it out with him until I die. Like, that's how I feel like her mentality is, you but, know what I mean? But do you think that she loves him? That's the thing. I mean, she certainly acts like she does. She's always like, Goku, sa. She gets emotional. Like, Goku has this weird ability to be so charming that everybody loves him. Mm. Do you think that that's what's keeping them together is that really strong bond of them being married? Oh, yeah. I, I don't, you know, I don't doubt that she still loves him. Because, like you said, there are various signs that she does still care for him. You know, what at the... The big tournament there, the Universe 6 tournament, she like ran, leaped off the friggin' ledge and like ran over to him and thought he was uh, almost dead, you know what I mean? So, I definitely think there is a lot of love there. I just think the main thing is, I don't know, maybe it's her personality, like maybe I'm seeing two things, but it just seems like she's at this point in her life where, yeah, she does care for him, but at the same time, she doesn't want to leave him because she doesn't, she fears being alone. Like, she's a strong woman, you know that, but... Do you, do you really believe that she fears being alone? Like, do you think that that's... Are you saying you, you gathered that from what the series has told you? Like, that what you think? The si well, not only just the series, but I guess I take it from being a woman myself. Like, I personally, you know, the greatest fear I have is dying alone. A lot of people have that fear. You know, and I'm sure a lot of people, even men have that fear. They don't want to be by themselves when the end comes. So I feel like even though she's a strong woman, you know, she used to be a fighter. Um, I really wish she would come back and kick some ass, but that'll probably never happen. Um, I agree. 
I, I definitely think deep down there is a part of her that is like, you know, I've been with Goku since I was, what, she was, how old is she in Dragon Ball? Like, what? Think, Wait, well, it depends on what part of the series we're talking about. When, when they he, first met, like, no, when they first got married, she was probably like 16, right? I think she was like, I think she was around 16, 17, 18. Yeah, I don't remember exactly, but yeah. right around there. Yeah. She, which is young, but in, it's Japan. So. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, they, she's been with him practically her whole entire